Hi, welcome to another edition of WeTV. I'm your host, Travis Sherman. On this episode, we are going to focus on the importance of telling stories in very limited time constraints. We will also get to speak with some of the brilliant minds behind these stories and what skills they developed working on these projects. As a special treat, we will take a look at two videos by our very own students which were accepted into the world's largest youth film festival this past week. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get to it. Today is March 13, 2013, and you're watching WeTV. Recently, Harbor High School participated in the Big Pitch Film Festival, Stamp Out Smoking. Students were given the opportunity to make a public service announcement of 27 seconds about the topic. WeTV accepted the challenge, and here are some of the videos. <laughs> You just took a look at two videos from Andrew McDaniel and Ryan Seitz. Both of these videos demonstrated risk associated with smoking. Here with us now is Drew McDaniel. Can you tell me uh, where you came up with the inspiration for the video? Well, we just wanted to look at the two sides of smoking and uh, we kind of came up with an idea about just to show the cons of it and you know what will happen if you do it. And we just came up with the idea. Uh, so it it, it seems like there was a lot of research involved with this type of video. Can you explain kind of the process and what you learned from it? Um, well, we learned more, you know, cons of why not to smoke and, um, or more pros of why not to smoke. And we learned um, just different stats and um, just a different look at. Can you tell me the process and, and which it took to actually create the video from idea to completion of the video? Well, we all sat down as a team. We um, came up with the idea and then we wrote the script, um, we came up with different um, different sets of characters we could use in it, we um, did, a, did a sheet, so we called up all of our actors we needed, um, we sat down, and we just finished it up. Okay, so can you kind of tell me about the difficulty associated with telling a story in 27 seconds? I mean, that's a, that's a very little amount of time. What's, what's the process like with that? We had to cut out a lot of shots and um, keep it simple, and it was pretty difficult, but we managed it to get in 27 seconds, and we hope we get a good outcome at the competition. Okay, well this, this video is actually entered in the competition right now. Uh, thanks for being here. Right now, we're going to take a look at a few more. Here are two videos brought to you by Jesse Weir and Carter Hansen. <laughs> that you would be the end of me, but I pursued you anyways. I give you so much money every week, but you give me nothing in return. You take my breath away, but I can't do this anymore.
but pretty hot. Yeah. What's up, guys? What's up, dude? You guys got any cigarettes? Uh, yeah, sure, I got one, man. Thanks. Yeah. Nice, bro. No problem. Who is that? It's my addiction. It follows me around whenever I want a cigarette. We gonna die today, and if it's not today, it's gonna be tomorrow. Welcome back. Here with me is Jesse Weir and Carter Henson. Now, both of you took a very creative approach that seems to re relate more towards teens. Can you elaborate a little more on that? Jesse, let's start with you. Uh, we, we went for a teens thing because going into our research plan, it was more of like, you know, starting at an early age. So then we kind of, we really focused on, you know, the, the, starting with that first one is really what hooks you. So. That's what we went Good technique. Uh, Carter, can you explain a little bit about your idea? Uh, we were just kind of doing uh, the idea of him loving the cigarette and like acting like he was in love with a person, and then at the end we kind of revealed that it was a cigarette he was actually speaking to. Me. Okay, so seeing the videos now, what would you change for the future? Jesse, let's go back to you. Uh, our video actually came out a little longer than we wanted to, so we had to shorten it. So being with that small of a time frame, we'd, we'd kind of want to plan it more and go into it better and not just go into it easy and come out with something that's a minute and a half long, too long. Well, it definitely takes a lot of planning. How about you, Carter? Uh, probably definitely choose a less cheesy idea next time because it kind of sounded, it sounded completely different on the video than it did on paper. Or, yeah, so... That's about it. Sure, and, and the point I think we need to get across is that everybody has their own idea and perspective on it. So what appeals to you may not appeal to some other people, but you know, people still, your audience still may uh, like the video. Okay, thanks Jesse and Carter. Let's take a look at our final two videos, and we'll be right back with Matthew Mates and Brandon Bucheri. <laughs> Many teens think that their life is a game, but smokeless tobacco can be just as harmful as cigarettes. Although chewing tobacco has been popularized by the mainstream media, it can be severely detrimental to teens' health. It's not that addicting. We're the only ones you not. You can quit anytime you want. They make both you both cool just turned 18. Let's start smoking Dude, now. Brandon's Man, we're like the only kids really who haven't started. It's not, started. So it's not, not that addicting. Here's something tobacco companies don't tell you. 42% of teens get addicted to cigarettes after their first one. Don't conform. You just saw Life's Not a Game and Don't Conform. And here with us now is Matthew Mates, who did the visual effects we see in the commercial, and Brandon Bucheri, who was the on-screen talent for Don't Conform. Brandon, clearly your video incorporates some advanced lighting techniques. Can you explain the process and how it influenced the ideas? Uh, yeah, well, the, the setting that we actually shot it in was uh, we were under some bleachers, and um, it was really dark under there, and so we needed the lights, um, obviously, so that we could see what we were doing. And also, um, we wanted to create some special effects with the camera um, without having to actually edit the video. So we did some lens flares with the lights and actually pointed the lights like, directly onto the camera. Now, what I love about your technique is that you chose to, because of the lack of light, you chose to add light and use it as an art form instead of just using it for uh, the bare minimum. Uh, so Matt, let's take a look at your video. You went through some rigorous CGI process. Uh, can you tell me where the idea came from and how you developed the CGI? As a group, we decided to uh, come up with the uh, graphic, and I used uh, motion. And uh, the way that I did that is frame by frame. I had to adjust it, which was a rigorous process. Yeah, but and it, so you, you actually then incorporated some advanced rotoscoping techniques, which is uh, some people in the industry still don't know how to do. So that's a, that's a great advancement for you. Okay, can you both elaborate a little on the process of taking a video with this approach and how it may relate better to teens? Uh, I just think it gets them interested. You know, if it's got teens doing the talent and teens doing the work, 
Um, I think it just kind of conveys the message a little bit better about, you know, why smoking is bad and why you shouldn't do it. Very true. Matt, what about you? And I think with our video, uh, many teens are interested with video games, so uh, this video, I think, appeals to teens. Great. Great idea. All right. Well, thank you both for joining me. We'll look forward to the work you will do in the future. Next, we're going to take a look at two of the four films that made it into the world's largest film festival. These films will be viewed in front of a crowd estimated to be around 10,000. We are very proud of these students' accomplishments, so let's take a look. <laughs> Not forget, Friday, it's three days, we have a test. Three days from now. Three days. Three days. Jeez. Two days. Sean, that's the second time. Hi right, guys, it's test day. Pull out a piece of paper and a pencil, please. Today. Today. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you like that? Good luck. <laughs> I can't believe you did this to me. You're irresponsible. I trusted you. I leave you alone for 10 seconds. Do you even know why I'm mad at you? Dead bodies. I'm gonna go get coffee. I'll be back in two minutes. Don't screw anything up. More people are coming. Like, trust me, you don't want anything out of there. Here with us now is Robert Crisp and Dakota Meineke. Thanks for joining us. These two projects had some pretty extreme measures. You had to complete the project in just four hours. Can you explain the process of coming up with a story, shooting and editing, and the importance of enforcing deadlines in the industry? Let's start with you, Robert. Uh, well, making up the storyline probably took 50% of our time just because there's so many like guidelines and just so having to de develop an idea that can be ended in about two minutes is just it's pretty hard. I can understand. Dakota, what about you? Oh, well, coming up with the story was, uh, was a pretty difficult part, uh, but the deadline was the most important thing, so we had to come up with the story that we could do, that we know we could do in the four hours, in the location we had with the stuff we had. 
Okay, uh, Robert, one of the things we all love about your films are the unique camera angles and the pacing. Can you tell me where you come up with the ideas for your shots? Well, I really just move the camera around until I find a shot that I like, and that takes up probably about like 75% of... And I think, I think that's one of the most important things with young filmmakers is that they, that they have these static shots, but with a constantly moving, it keeps the pacing up. Uh, Dakota, as a camera operator for the project, can you talk a little bit about the style you chose? Uh, I, we uh, decided, as a group, we decided to go handheld most of the time uh, because it was, it was more of a non-stop moving pace, uh, so it was more of a handheld sure. style. Uh, both of these films have been accepted into the Seattle Film Festival and have created a massive opportunity in which you can network with not only students from around the world, but professionals as well. You can, can you speak a little bit about that? Um, well, the, the festival is just a great place. I went last year, and it's just a great place to, to meet other people like me that just enjoy making films. Yeah. Uh, Dakota, you're looking to go this year. Can you talk about uh, what opportunities you may have with that? Well, I mean, uh, I might have all the opportunities in the world. I might be able to meet some big producers, big filmmakers, directors. I mean, it's a great opportunity for me, so I decided to take it. Okay, uh, all right then. Well, thank you both for the phenomenal work you do, and we can't wait for the future. That's all we have for this week. Make sure to tune in to WeTV, and we'll see you next time.